You're watching the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. Right now at 7, the Maple Leaf Festival wrapped things up yesterday. Our very own Mitch Adams shares how this year was another successful year. Also, residents in Girard came together to honor firefighters who have died in the line of duty. And we've got a beautiful but somewhat cool start to the day. It is going to warm up and then later it's going to rain. We're going to details on that forecast. Get you out the door coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOEM Morning News on Fox 14. I'm Elise Snowy. I'm Chris Warner just after 7 o'clock on this Monday, October the 21st. And boy, it, you know, we had a few days that have felt like October. Sure. Not really going to feel like it uh, this week. No, but you know, it's going to be a good week, a good Monday, and it was oh, a, yeah. a fantastic weekend with the Maple Leaf Festival. It certainly was. Week. It was great weather yes. to be out there. It's one of those long-standing traditions in Carthage. Our very own Mitch Adams shares how each year is successful. A historic, historical aspect of it is really important to me. The 58th annual Maple Leaf Festival is in full swing in Carthage, Missouri. The festival, held in the city square, brings in tens of thousands of attendees annually. One of the largest draws is the parade, which had over 180 entries this year. We are having our annual uh, parade for Maple Leaf Festival. Um, it's been in existence since 1967. Um, it's the largest parade in the area, four states area. The Carthage Chamber of Commerce has seen large growth in the festival over the years, which has complemented the city's economy. It works great for the community. It brings a ton of new people from outside the area in to build up our small businesses. We are 100% behind our small businesses. Desra Short has attended the festival many times over the last several years and explained why the festival, and especially the extravagant parade, benefit the community. I think as it draws people from a, a long, I mean, far away from like not just around the area, but people know about it from like states over, like past beyond the four states. As the week-long fall celebration comes to a close, community members reunite with their hometown and people old and new ring in autumn in a richly historic town. Reporting in Carthage, Mitch Adams, KOAM News. The Maple Leaf Festival wrapped up yesterday after a hymnal recital and lunch. Uh, you know, for my wife, she's from Carthage. Yeah. So for them, I mean, it was a, their annual tradition mm -hmm. as a family to go every year to the parade and everything going on. So since we've been married, that's become part of our tradition as well. Oh, how fun. Growing up in Joplin, you know, we went to the Christmas parade sure. every year, but we didn't trek up to Carthage right. for, for the Maple Leaf Festival. It's a, a fantastic event. It really is. Too. And it was fantastic weather this weekend for the Maple Leaf Festival. It's going to be a little warmer today and a little windier as well. And then later it's going to be a little wetter. Yes, rain, water will fall from the sky and it will be wonderful because we need it. Now, it's not going to be a lot. It's not going to solve our drought problems overnight, but at least it's something. Great view of the sunrise, though, from our camera downtown Pittsburgh. Looking back to the west, another great view of the sunrise from our camera at 7th and Range Line in Joplin. Modoc camera, 20th and Range Line. Looking back to the north, folks getting their day underway. Can't quite see the sunrise yet, but you just saw it's definitely happening. And as we take a look at the KDOT camera from US 69, East 520th Avenue, getting a little more daylight out there as well as we get this Monday underway into the future track by this afternoon. In fact, through the morning, winds will start to increase out of the south. Gusts will be from 20 to 30 miles an hour. The farther west you are, the gustier it'll be. Temperatures again above normal. Most of us topping out at about 80 degrees out there and then after seven, look at this scattered showers and storms. That's not an overly impressive line of showers and storms, and we're not expecting any severe weather, but nonetheless, there's some rain moving in late tonight into the overnight hours. Sitting at 54 in Joplin, down to 49 in Pittsburgh this morning, and our temperatures have been mixed all morning and widely so. There's a 10 degree gap just up and down I-44 from Miami to Joplin, and that's where it's been. We're in the low, mid, upper 40s, and then low to mid 50s as we start our Monday. Again, temperature is about 80 degrees, a few clouds here and there, and in that south wind gusting anywhere from 20 to 30 miles an hour ahead of the showers and storms tonight. We'll talk more about the rain chances and how much the winds are going to increase and what our temperatures do over the next few days here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. On Joplin area firefighter Tucker Berry passed away yesterday after being involved in an accident Saturday. The accident reportedly involved a golf cart. Now, EMS transported Barry to the hospital with serious injuries. 
Mary served as a Reddings Mill firefighter, a volunteer with Lockwood Fire, and was a Dade County first responder. Officials escorted firefighter Tucker Berry to the Joplin Regional Airport at 9.45 p.m. from Mercy Joplin North on Main Street to the private aviation terminal. The firefighter Berry was an organ donor, and he was transported by private plane to Kansas City in the care of a special medical donation team. A man is dead and multiple others are injured following a serious crash involving an SUV and van near Baxter Springs. Baxter Springs, Cherokee County first responders and Kansas Highway Patrol all were notified. The 2018 Ford SUV failed to stop at the intersection of Southeast Greenlaw Road and Southeast 20th Street and was struck by the westbound van. The passenger of the SUV, 36-year-old Matthew Atkinson, died on scene. The driver, 35-year-old Mary Ann Atkinson, suffered serious injuries and was transported to Freeman West. Now, the driver of the van, 37-year-old Charlotte King, and her four minor passengers all sustained minor injuries. The male SUV passenger was the only one reported to not be wearing a seatbelt. And to be the first to see breaking news, weather, and sports, you can download the KOAM News app. It's available free of charge in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Just search for the KOAM News app. A 37-year tradition of honoring local and national firefighters that have died in the line of duty took place in Girard, Kansas yesterday afternoon. And new memorials have been added in memory of fallen local service members. KOAM's Mitch Adams has more. Uh, we, as chiefs and previous chiefs, uh, just went to a place where families can come and see their one loved ones who can be recognized for giving the ultimate sacrifice. For the 37th year in a row, area departments gather in Girard to mourn firefighters who lost their lives in the line of duty. Visitors came from as far as Illinois and Maryland to participate in the memorial. The intent of the service? to keep the memories of local and national heroes alive. The service is we're, we're honoring the fallen firefighters from the previous year and, so, and it's uh, good to honor them because they put their lives on the line every day when they go out and fight the fires or whatever they do. Um, and it's, I think it's an honor to Gerard to have this uh, fallen firefighter memorial every year. This year's service hits close to home for Gerard's fire chief, Jeff Turner who's still mourning the loss of his friend and former Girard Fire Chief Pete Scales. Chief Scales passed away at the age of 69 in 2022. He was with Girard Fire Department for over 30 years. Chief Scales is a world of knowledge. Uh, he had a passion, a drive for the fire service. Uh, as a young fireman starting out in my early career, I looked up to this gentleman as a young fireman and what idolized him. And as over my career, he has led me down the path of success, and that's why I cherish you know, his leadership, his knowledge and experience, and for his dedication to my success in the fire service as well. A statue dedicated to Scales was unveiled at the memorial. It took place alongside a wreath presentation and a reading of more than 200 firefighters that died in the line of duty in 2023 alone. Approaching the 40th year of this memorial, Chief Turner describes the feeling of honoring these fallen heroes year after year. It still gives a heavy heart knowing that, you know, these 226 have gave the ultimate sacrifice. It shouldn't be that high of a number. But you, you figure out of those 226, the families, the friends, the people who, the relationships with this individual is more than anybody can imagine and affects everybody. It affects us, our brotherhood and our sisters and our own organizations as well. The Girard Fire Department plans to add more to its lawn memorial, including a plaque dedicating it to the brave firefighters who gave up their life as an ultimate sacrifice. In Girard, Mitch Adams, KOAM News. The next Fallen Firefighter Memorial in Girard is already on the schedule. It will take place October 19th of next year. And those are our top news stories this half hour. Coming up next, we'll hear from a few representatives of the American Heart Association on how your donations help those who have been impacted by heart disease. We'll be right back, but first, here's a live look from Independence, Kansas, ahead of Nia Walla.
Well, the 2024 Four States Heart Walk is all set for this Saturday. Ajana Smith and the American Heart Asso from the American Heart Association and Derek Kenegin, whose son, Charlie, will have his survivor story shared at the Heart Walk. And they're with us this morning to share how your donations make a difference. Welcome to you both. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. So talk to me about the Four States Heart Walk and the impact that, you know, the American Heart Association has had on the community here in the Four States. Yeah, so um, our Heart Walk is going to be this Saturday at 9 a.m. It's at Missouri Southern at the Leggett & Platt Athletic mm -hmm. Center. And um, every year we have three to 400 people that mm -hmm. come together to, to walk, to remember uh, folks that, you know, family members that they've lost um, and survivors uh, like Charlie. Yes. And, um, but it, it's a lot of fun. It's a family event. So, uh, you know, we're going to, we're actually going to do a Halloween parade for the kids. Oh, they can fun. come, they can come in their costumes. We're going to have face painting. We have a mascot race. So it's, it's a family event and it's fun, but it is again, to raise money for the American Heart Association and to remember those that we've lost and uh, to honor our survivors. Absolutely, very impactful yeah. event. Um, and so for people who are still wanting to get involved yes. to come this weekend, where can they do so? Yeah, so you can go to fourstatesheartwalk.com, that's for the number four, statesheartwalk.com, and you can register and you can sh just show up 9 a.m. Saturday morning. We'll have a lot of booths, like I said, a lot of fun. It's a family event, and then we'll do our walk around the Missouri Southern Campus, and it's a lot of fun. Absolutely, and then every year you also honor a survivor and you share yes. their story. And Derek, your son, Charlie, who's two years old, about to be three, is going to be honored this weekend. Talk to me a little bit about Charlie, his story, and just you know what it means to reach this point in his medical journey. Good morning, and uh, my son Charlie was diagnosed at seven weeks old mm -hmm. with Wolf Parkinson's white. It's an extra electrical pathway uh, way on the heart, causes it to beat off rhythm. Um, he's been through quite a bit, and yes. it's an honor to be selected to share his story, and we really appreciate it. Uh, the heart walk means a lot to us mm -hmm. because the research that they, they fund is helping our son. Yes. Um, I'm not sure what we would be doing without mm. the medication that he's on. Okay. And who knows where we would be without the funding to go towards that. Um, our son is my wife, Tiffany, and mm -hmm. I, uh, we love our son with all of our heart. He is such a great little boy. Uh, smiles a lot. He mm -hmm. plays. He's just, he loves everybody. He loves new things. He loves dinosaurs, riding his <laughs> bicycle. Um, he is such the light of our yes. life. And We'll be interested to see what he does here at this Heart Walk. Absolutely. Uh, with as many people in the costumes. But uh, we look forward to participating. Absolutely. Uh, this will be our first year joining the journey on the American Heart mm -hmm. Walk. Um, we decided that it was time that we, we pitched in and helped out as well. Um, and he is so awesome. It's incredible. I look forward to introducing him to everybody. Yes. Um, so he just from a very young age mm -hmm. at seven weeks old being diagnosed with wolf parkinson's mm -hmm. weight was terrifying um not knowing what to do right uh, being kind of felt like we were alone sure. um, i can imagine yeah as a father you are intended to protect mm -hmm. your child and with something like this what can you do right you have to trust in a lot of doctors and try to understand what they're telling you um Thankfully for us, we've had a lot of help. My wife is very intelligent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, she's, uh, we're very big advocates for our son. We mm -hmm. have to be. And oh, uh, yes. fortunately enough for us, there's programs like the American Heart Association that have been helping us out along the way. Uh, these doctors are incredible. I, I really hope that people make it out to this American Absolutely, Heart absolutely. As you can see, just, just the difference and impact it has on one person's life, one family's life. So be sure to, to make it out there and support not only Derek and Charlie, but the American Heart Association as well. We'll of course have details on our website later on today, koemnewsnow.com. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Yeah. Happy to have you here. You Stick us. around, we'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News. It's 719 now on this Monday morning. Skywatch Storm Tracker again. Here it is clear. 
Nothing out there other than some bad radar echoes over by uh, the Springfield radar site. And that's really about it. This is what we're keeping an eye on. Now, this stretches from north, uh, from central Nebraska, south central Nebraska, all the way back through Kansas. And then even further south, back to, uh, here in the latest loops, we have some new development that's uh, taking place right through here and then uh, we've even got some strong even we had a severe thunderstorm earlier with the storm north of Lubbock. All of this is going to eventually make its way into our area late this evening. Now the good news is at least for us what we see we're not anticipating any severe weather. The bad news is what we're expecting is going to be scattered. So not everyone necessarily will see rain tonight, but at least some of us will get something out of this activity between here and there. Though we are looking at gusty south winds anywhere from 20 30 miles an hour. We'll have mostly clear skies, few clouds here and there and temperatures, of course, above average as that's been kind of the common theme here over the last several weeks. By five o'clock, there's some of those clouds and a few stray showers in our far western counties. But as the evening progresses, these scattered showers and storms will continue to push off to the east. So again, initially from Chanute Parsons Coffeeville by say uh, oh, seven, eight o'clock tonight by midnight across uh, spreading further into Missouri with some redevelopment possible across parts of Kansas. And then by tomorrow morning around five, maybe a stray shower or storm lingering out there. Otherwise, we're clearing out and we're going to be drying out. And Tuesday is looking to be not only the windiest day this week, but also the hottest day we see over the next several days as well. Well, as temperatures go well into the upper 80s for many of us, maybe even a couple of low 90 degree readings out there as well. In terms of the winds again today, like what we've seen here, we'll have that uh, 20 mile an hour wind gust zone right through here and then 20 to 30 miles an hour a little further to the east. Now overnight tonight, as those storms push through, these are not a, these are gusts not associated with thunderstorm activity, but it's going to get very windy overnight with those winds out of the south gusting upwards of 30, 40 miles an hour, maybe even a little higher than that across a broader portion of the area as we head into tomorrow morning, say around 5, 6 a.m. Tuesday again, those gusts will be in that 20 to 30 mile an hour range, maybe even 30 to 40 miles an hour. There will be a brief pause for some of us, and then Wednesday we have a boundary coming through, shifts our winds out of the north. Winds will gust again 20 30 miles an hour out there, but unfortunately this boundary is not going to have a significant impact on our temperatures. All right, outside clear skies in Joplin 54 south breeze at about nine miles an hour. Temperatures mixed across the region, low mid upper 40s and then into the low to mid 50s across the region and uh, like this 12 degree disparity here between Miami and Joplin 42 Miami 54 Joplin. That's not that far of a drive on the pike, so that's what I'm saying. They're fairly well mixed out there this morning. All of us warming up though. Few clouds, winds increasing through the morning. 50 to start our day. 70 by 11 o'clock this morning. Again, on high, ahead of highs on average about 80 out there with a few passing clouds from time to time. Breezy into the overnight. Again, after about seven showers, thunderstorms scattered start rolling into the area. They'll continue overnight tonight. And we'll fall back to about 60. And again, tomorrow our hottest day. Upper 80s, maybe even some low 90s. Low 80s Wednesday. Again, that boundary cools us back just not significantly upper 70s by Thursday and as we head into the weekend as you can see unfortunately we are staying dry and we are staying above normal out there as we go into the upper 70s and low 80s let's check your forecast we're back with more of the KOM morning news right after this well, the Fitz State Theater Department invites you to their weekend performance of A Little Night Music. Now, Lyndon Little is with us this morning to share a little insight on the production. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for being with us. Happy to have you here. So for those who might not know about the plot of uh, The Little Night Music, talk to me a little bit about that. Uh, well, it takes place in Sweden on the longest day of the year, mm. midsummer. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a little taste of summer in the fall mm -hmm. um, and it it's a, a love, people falling in and out of love. Sure. Um, so it's a very romantic plot. It has a lush score. Uh, it's written by Stephen Sondheim. Oh, amazing. Yes, we, uh, he passed away in 2023. Yes. And so there's been a rush to produce his works. And this is one of his mid-career titles. So we're really looking forward to producing that work. Absolutely incredible. Now, this is at the Bicknell Family Center for the Arts this weekend. Now, you've been directing, you're the director of uh, the Pitt State Theater Department for 10 years. So what does it mean to just, you know, 
keep working towards these productions after productions and doing, you know, such an iconic one from Stephen Sondheim. Yeah, this one is special because mm -hmm. it's actually a collaboration between three organizations on campus, PSU Opera Workshop, mm -hmm. the Bignall Family Center yes. for the Arts, and Pitt State Theater. So we're really excited to be celebrating the 10th anniversary of the building yes. with this big title um, coming up. Uh, so it's been a, a wonderful collaboration between those three or organizations on campus. Absolutely. It's coming up this week. Are you ready for it? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so if people want to come and see this show, where can they do so? Talk to me about the times and the dates. Yeah, so it's October 25th through the 27th. Mm -hmm. And we, so Oct Friday is a 7.30 p.m. show. Mm -hmm. Then Saturday we have a 7.30 p.m. show. And then Saturday we also have a 2 p.m. matinee and Sunday a 2 p.m. matinee. Fantastic. And how much are tickets? Uh, they are 16 for the general public. Sure. And 11 for students and seniors, free for students and PSU faculty with their ID. Oh, fantastic. And then where can people go to purchase tickets? Can they do so online or out the door? Uh, yeah, you can do that through the ticket office, okay. uh, through, through PSU's ticket office. All righty. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Happy to have you. If your production breaks a leg, it sounds like it's going to be absolutely amazing and you don't want to miss it. For tickets to this weekend's performance, you can see the contact info at the bottom of your screen. Stick around. We'll be back with more right after this. The four states most watched news starts now. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News on Fox 14. It's currently 7.30. I'm Elise Snowy. On Friday around 5.50 p.m., there was a vehicle accident in the Pittsburgh Judicial Center parking lot involving a Crawford County ballot drop box. Now, the driver of the vehicle stated that the glare of the sun caused the westbound vehicle to accidentally jump the curb and strike the ballot drop box. Pittsburgh police passing by pulled in and initiated an accident report as well as secured the ballots that were in the drop box. Now, Crawford County Clerk Lisa Lusker responded to the accident scene and took possession of the sealed ballots. Now, those ballots were transported directly to the Crawford County Courthouse by election officials. The accident is still under investigation. You can find alternate places to drop off your ballot on our website, koamnewsnow.com. Well, Carl Junction Residential Care partnered with Cruise in Maine to help raise money for Christmas presents for the residents in their care. The cruise included a bake sale, music, and a parking lot full of cars, trucks, and bikes. They also held a trunk and treat. It's really important uh, that we have these events so we can raise money for activities for our residents. Christmas parties and things that the residents should need. Carl Junction Residential Care also has an adopt a resident program where a family can buy a gift from a wish list for the resident for $50 or less. Now let's check in with Chris for a look at the forecast. Well, as the Beatles once said, here comes the sun and there it is starting to peek over the horizon here from our camera in downtown Pittsburgh. Looking great, a little bit cool in some locations this morning, but not a bad start to the day. Our camera seventh and range line, the sun is still hiding behind the trees here, but it is on its way. Modoc camera 20th and range line. Of course, range line be getting filled up with folks doing you know, whatever it is they're doing, going to work, going to shop, going to school, going to simply take a drive. Sometimes that's relaxing. Range line, I don't know, is necessarily the place to take a relaxing drive, but you know, whatever floats your boat. KDOT camera 69 East 520th Avenue looking good as well. Today we're going to warm up. We're going to be breezy. And then this evening, I've got a surprise. If you have not been with us for the last uh, 45, uh, 33 minutes, then I've got a surprise into the afternoon. We go winds increasing this morning out of the south, gusting from 20 upwards of 30 miles an hour out there and temperatures again above normal with most of us topping out at about 80 degrees. But look at four o'clock. Look very closely on your screen. See those clouds out there in Greenwood County. That is ahead of a line of showers and storms. that's going to roll through the area. Now they're going to be scattered, so not everyone will see rain, but I think most of us have a pretty good shot of at least something. And the good news is we're not anticipating any severe weather with that with this activity, but some rumbles of thunder will be possible. 54 in Joplin right now, 48 in Pittsburgh and around the area. We've still got low mid upper 40s and then we go into the low to mid 50s as we get this Monday underway. Again, highs for most of us topping out about 80 degrees. We'll have a few clouds here and there until we get to about 7 o'clock when those thunderstorms and showers begin rolling in and again we will be breezy. The winds increase tonight into tomorrow. Temperatures do as well. Details on all that in the full forecast here in just a few more minutes. Elise. Chris, thanks. 
Well, it's not uncommon to witness seize of political signs doting yards across the country leading up to a major election. And while plenty of signs have gone up, some political science experts are shedding light on why many are noticing a decrease in the number of signs this year compared to 2020. Fox News' Ted Lindner takes a closer look. Yard signs supporting particular candidates are typically a hallmark of election seasons. But as the countdown to November 5th ticks louder, a number of voters across the country say they don't feel comfortable placing these signs on their properties. I would never put a political sign up on my car or my house, ever. Never. Doesn't matter. Nope. Never would do that. That is a level of bravery that I do not have. Many cite concerns over potential reactions from neighbors or folks passing by during what they say is a polarized election cycle. Somewhere in that spectrum lies these folks who are um, supporters, but they don't want to be public about it. They don't want to um, take the risk of, of somebody confronting them or, or tearing down their lawn sign or, or, or whatever might happen. But even in critical swing states like Michigan, that could be a determining factor in who wins the White House, residents there are noticing a lack of presidential signage. On my way to work and, and just around town, uh, I see a, a dearth of presidential lawn signs compared to previous cycles. Others aren't letting their fears get the best of them, highlighting how it all comes down to respecting everyone's right to freedom of speech. Yeah, I know a lot of people say, well, I'm not putting a sign out. Uh, people, neighbors down the street will get mad. They'll do this and that. So, so what? You have a right to do what you want to do, as long as you're not hurting anybody in the process. Meanwhile, a recent survey from the Associated Press NORC Center reveals roughly six in 10 Americans say they need to limit how much information about politics they consume in order to avoid feeling fatigued. Ted Lindner, Fox News. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. A stolen bird is reunited with its owner after spending a little over a month apart. We'll be right back, but first, here's a live look from downtown Independence, Kansas. In Consumer Watch this morning, well, Boeing and a union may have a new deal to end an ongoing strike. Now, the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers Union says it's taking a Boeing offer to its members for a vote. A new deal could give a 35% wage hike over four years. The potential deal is a 10% increase from the last pay raise offer. The union is expected to vote on the new proposal on Wednesday. Young troops, a part of the Girl Scouts, may soon see a membership fee increase. The Girl Scouts of America says it may raise yearly membership fees by 240%, jumping from an annual $25 to $85. The Girl Scouts National Board will vote on the potential increase this weekend. The Girl Scouts ended the 2023 fiscal year in the red with a $4.4 million deficit, and that could grow to $5.6 million by the end of this year. Well, ensuring your aging loved ones receive quality care is important. And across the country, thousands of adult day centers are continuing to offer specialized services to help enhance seniors' quality of life. Now, these facilities are different from nursing homes, and the way many embrace the traditions of the communities they serve come with plenty of benefits. Fox News correspondent Jackie Abanez takes a closer look. Aging isn't always easy, and as people get into the later years of their life, it's not uncommon for some to require more attention. But for those who aren't ready for residential stays at nursing homes, thousands of adult day centers around the country are helping to strengthen the social interactions and health of seniors. So you're getting nurses, you're getting OT, physical therapy, uh, recreational therapy, social workers, mental health, um, speech therapy. Because these spaces look after clients during the day, it can give their family members and caregivers more personal time for work or to take a break. Everybody who sees me raises their thumb to tell me how great it is that I insist on coming. Adult day centers are also the most racially diverse long-term care facilities in the nation. Data from the CDC reveals 60% of attendees identify as a person of color. Many centers cater their programs to the cultures of those they serve. 
In terms of hours, it's culturally sensitive and culturally competent for Vietnamese, Korean, and Chinese seniors. So the food is familiar, the faces are familiar, the language is familiar. Imagine having to be in a nursing home and not being able to communicate. These specialized offerings can help older adults feel less isolated, which can decrease the risk of depression and ease symptoms of dementia. Advocates say adult day centers are the most cost-effective health care options for seniors, but they see the least amount of clients out of all long-term care settings because Medicare doesn't cover them. I'm Jackie Abanez, Fox News. And those are our top consumer stories. Let's take a look at the market prices before the opening bell. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News 744 now on this Monday morning. Again, Skywatch Storm Tracker, there is nothing at this time in our area, but off to our west we have this. These showers and thunderstorms out to our west. Now they're stretching from south central Nebraska all the way back down toward Lubbock out there where earlier they did have a uh, briefly severe thunderstorm, which has actually now gone severe again. Now some good news for us. This is going to make it to our way into our area rather. And some other good news is while there is a severe storm down there, we are not anticipating any of this to be severe by the time it gets here. The bad news is, is it's going to be in a, an ending state in a way, not stopping, but it will be a bit more scattered between here and there. It's going to be warm, it's going to be windy, and it is going to be above normal out there with just a few clouds here and there. So by noon, you can see we're warming up. South winds gusting anywhere from 20 to 30 miles an hour. By 5, there's those clouds, there's a few showers uh, rolling into our far western counties. And of course, as we progress through the evening, here comes a batch of showers and storms. Now again, by the time it gets here, it's going to be in a very scattered state. So not everyone necessarily is going to see rain, but we at least are going to get something, and it's a lot more rain than what we've seen over the last several weeks, which has been pretty much zero rain. Now, of course, it will not solve our drought problems overnight, but any rain we can get will be great, and it will continue into the late night and overnight hours as well as we could get a couple of different rounds of showers and thunderstorms out there. But again, the good news is nothing strong or severe expected. By Tuesday morning, maybe an isolated shower storm remaining. Most of us are dry as this clears on out of here. Winds overnight tonight into Tuesday will start gusting anywhere from 30 to potentially 40 miles an hour and here's what it looks like on the wind tracker now today the stronger winds out to the west initially and the, the not as strong winds the 20 mile an hour gusts down to the east but as the storms roll through these are not associated with the thunderstorms these are just southerly wind gusts out there you can see by 10 o'clock they're starting to ramp up and it gets to a point where all of us are in that 30 to 40 mile an hour wind gust range it won't just be one section of the viewing area it will be everyone as we head into tuesday morning so do be prepared for that of course no outdoor burning but if you're traveling tomorrow morning or overnight tonight, just hold on to the wheel, especially in high profile vehicles. Gusty winds will continue through Tuesday and into Wednesday as well. Quick look at temperatures 54 in Joplin, South Breeze at 9, clear skies as the sun is rising around the area. It's been a mixed bag of temperatures all morning long. Miami Joplin, a great example of that. 42 Miami, 54 Joplin. That's not a far drive on the turnpike. So we've got low, mid, upper 40s, and then low to mid 50s as we're getting this Monday underway. So about 50 by 8 a.m. Again, a few clouds out there. Winds will start picking up this morning. 70 by 11 o'clock. Highs today, most of us topping out right about 80. Lows tonight back around 60. Our hottest day over the next several days tomorrow. Mid-upper 80s, maybe even some low 90s. Gusty winds continue into Wednesday. We have a boundary coming through. Winds shift out of the north. It does not drop our temperatures significantly, but it does bring them down a little bit. As we head into the weekend, upper 70s and low 80s out there. Let's check your forecast. We're back with more of the KOM Morning News right after this. A little over a month ago, a woman in California came home to find both of her pet birds had been stolen. Now one of the birds is back home with its owner. As Tim Johns explains, the case is not yet completely mm -hmm. closed. It was a scene of pure jubilation. Over a month after her bird tofu was stolen, Mercedes Kemp finally reunited with him on Tuesday. He recognized me as I was crossing the street, and by the time I got up to him, we were both just smiling ear to ear, overjoyed. Hi, Kemp. Hi, Hi. 
Tofu was stolen along with another bird named Plato last month from Kemp's Feathered Follies pet store in Concord. Both birds are estimated to be worth thousands of dollars. After initially running cold, the Concord Police Department says additional evidence uncovered by the Union City Police Department ultimately led them to Tofu, who had been sold at least four times and was down in Los Angeles. Um, we did um, follow-up um, investigation in various cities. Uh, we were in San Jose, Fremont, Union City, uh, into Modesto, and every, um, every step we took led us a little bit closer. Kemp says while Tofu was missing, she and her shop received an enormous outpouring of support from the community. Oh my gosh, gosh. I read the paper. Oh. We witnessed some of that support firsthand while at Feathered Follies on Wednesday. I always come here for my birds too, but I was so excited when I saw the pictures and wow. <laughs> oh, so grateful. Oh my gosh, I'm so grateful. <laughs> I know. It's while Tofu has been reunited with his owner, the other stolen bird, Plato, is still missing. And the Concord Police Department says they're doing everything they can to bring him back home. You're being shy, boy. As for Kemp, she says she couldn't be happier to be reunited with her baby once again. And for the love that she's gotten in his absence, she plans on paying some of it back. She tells us she recently created a nonprofit called the Feathered Follies Foundation. We want to be able to help birds that can't help themselves. So we have, you know, a roof and some food and a place to help rehabilitate them when they need it. Authorities have identified two suspects in the bird napping cases. One of them has already been arrested. The other has an outstanding warrant out for his arrest. That's certainly a sad story, mm -hmm. but impressive that at least one of the birds is home. Yes. Hopefully Plato will be home very yes, soon. Yes, fingers crossed. Hope so. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got ourselves nothing on the Skywatch Storm Tracker right now, but as we talked about earlier, <laughs> off to our west, we've got showers and thunderstorms stretching from south central Nebraska all the way down toward the Lubbock, Texas area. All of this will eventually make its way into our area late this evening into the overnight hours. Now, there have been some strong to severe storms out to our west. We're not expecting any of that here. Ahead of that, we're going to have mostly clear skies, a few clouds, south winds gusting upwards of 20 to 30 miles an hour by five. Some of those clouds start rolling in by nine. Take a look. They're going to be scattered storms. So not everybody will receive rain, but I think more of us will receive rain than have received any in the last few days. And these scattered showers and storms will continue overnight tonight and be on the way out by early tomorrow morning. But between now and then also wind gusts will start picking up across the region. So today again, south winds gusting 20 to 30, but overnight tonight, non thunderstorm wind gusts upwards of 40 miles an hour will be possible possible across the entire area. That's a quick check of your forecast. We'll have another look at the forecast and the news you need to know right after this. Well, here's a check of today's top headlines. The news you need to know before you head out the door. Joplin area firefighter Tucker Berry passed away yesterday after being involved in an accident Saturday. The accident reportedly involved a golf cart. EMS transported Berry to the hospital with serious injuries. Barry served as a Reddings Mill firefighter, a volunteer with Lockwood Fire, and a Dade County first responder. Officials escorted firefighter Barry to the Joplin Regional Airport to a private aviation terminal where he was transported by private plane to Kansas City in the care of a special medical donation team. A man is dead and multiple others are injured following a serious crash involving an SUV and van near Baxter Springs. The Ford SUV failed to stop at the intersection of Southeast Green Lawn Road and Southeast 20th Street and was struck by the van. Now, the driver of the SUV sustained serious injuries and was transported to Freeman while the passenger died on the scene. All occupants of the van sustained minor injuries. On Friday evening, a vehicle hit a Crawford County ballot drop box at the Pittsburgh Judicial Center parking lot. Now, the driver stated that the glare of the sun caused the vehicle to accidentally jump the curb and strike the ballot drop box. Pittsburgh police initiated an accident report and secured the ballots that were in the drop box. The ballots were then direct, were transported directly to the Crawford County Courthouse by election officials. The accident is still under investigation.
All right, cool start this morning. Winds increasing, those south winds gusting 20, 30 miles an hour. Highs right around 80 with a few clouds here and there. Clouds increase later. Show do some shower and thunderstorm chances. No severe weather is expected, but at least some of us will get some rain and breezy overnight. Non thunderstorm wind gusts pushing 40 miles an hour. Those winds continue into our Tuesday, the hottest day over the next few days as we go into the mid upper 80s, maybe even some low 90s. After that, a boundary on Wednesday brings more winds and slightly cooler temperatures temperatures as we go back into the upper 70s and low 80s. Mm. Well, pets dressed in spooky costumes walked a catwalk at a shopping mall in the Philippines for a special Halloween event. Around 30 people took part in their freaky four legged companions in the furry, scary pet Halloween party at one mall in Valenzuela. Among the entrants was a poodle dressed as a scorpion and a Persian cat wearing a zombie costume. The grand prize went to a <laughs> seven year old poodle named Harry who strutted his stuff confidently down the catwalk as go. a tarantula. How cute. Uh, so, uh, very, very cool. <laughs> we'll be back with more news and weather today at noon. Have a great rest of your morning.